Inside the main hall of the Hildington Manor, all of Hildington's staff is standing in a well-formed line, shoulder to shoulder. Hildington is pacing back and forth, checking each of his staff members to make sure they look ship-shape and prepared for their tasks. From left to right stand Jock LaCroix, Harold Elmers, Juliet Scriber, Alexa DeHart, and Rosie Chen. Elmer stands out the most, being the tallest. Juliet is slightly taller than Alexa, and Alexa stands a couple of inches taller than the shortest of the group, Rosie. LaCroix is currently wearing his chef garb, while Elmer's wears a black suit and tie, with not a single wrinkle present on it. LaCroix is a little slumped over, and Elmer's is standing up perfectly straight. LaCroix's mustache is neatly trimmed, but his jet black hair is all over. Elmer's hair, however, is neatly combed back. Juliet, right next to him, is wearing a simple white blouse and medium-length skirt. Her auburn hair is cut neatly so that it falls halfway down the back of her neck. Alexa has on brown overalls and a dirty white t-shirt underneath. She has some dirt smudges on her face and in the pocket of her overalls contain two tan gloves. She's currently twirling her long brown hair but stops when she realizes what she's doing. Rosie wears a similar set of clothes as Juliet except her blouse is light blue. Her dark brown hair is set in a bun. Hildington in front of them is currently wearing a white suit with a bluish scarf. His blonde hair is neatly combed to the side. Some gray strands can be seen here and there, but his face is without any signs of age. Behind all of them, the magnificent grand staircase that leads to the guest rooms. Above them, a fancy chandelier. Splendid! Now, tonight's a big night. We must impress the guests. I need all of you to give it your all tonight. No slip-ups, got it? Everyone nods. Good. Now, LaCroix, what's on tonight's menu? Cava tapi with primavera sauce, roasted duck, croissant, and a chocolate cake for dessert. It's a little casual, but I figured everyone would enjoy it nonetheless. Sounds marvelous. I have to remember to save room for dessert. De heart is everything properly trimmed in the garden? Yes, sir. I've gotten the flowers that you requested. They're all in the vases right now. I'll set them on the table once it's made. The roses? Yes, sir. All of your tools are properly sharpened, yes? I believe so, yes. Excellent. Rosie, are all of the rooms prepared? Yes. I took extra care to make sure that they're perfect. All of the invitations have been sent? Yes, and everyone has responded. They're all coming. Perfect. This won't be a dinner party they're soon to forget. Juliet, I've got some more paperwork for you, so you can work on that before dinner. And Alexa, don't distract her. Of course, sir. And you, Elmers, you're familiar with the guest's name, their appearance, height, and weight, correct? Yes, sir. I am well prepared for the task. Fantastic. The garden tools are in the shed, if you have any unforeseen problems with them. <laughs> of course, sir. Very well. The guests should be arriving soon. Remember, treat it like their last meal. As you were. A black car with tinted glass drives, carrying Detective Holloway. Holloway's hair has been neatly combed in preparation for the dinner party. He also has a dark gray jacket on, as well as black pants. Holloway isn't worried about his clothes at the moment as he is cautiously looking ahead of him, holding his phone in one hand. Around him are medium-sized trees, a forest. The sun provides some light onto the forest, but it's mostly blocked by the leaves. The road goes right through the forest, but the end doesn't seem to be anywhere. Yes, babe, I'll call every night. I'm only there for five nights, you know. Doesn't it seem weird, though? Three famous people, and then there's you. Do you even know why you were invited to this thing? Yeah, it's definitely weird. No, I'm not sure why I was invited. The invite was very vague. It just said that my skills may be needed, whatever that means. Your skills? Like your detective skills? You don't think... Don't worry. I doubt it's anything serious. It's not like anyone's gonna be murdered at a silly little party. <sighs> Alright. I just wish I was there with you. I wish you were here, too. I... Hello? Annie, are you still there? Holloway quickly looks at his phone and then turns his attention back to the road, with a confused look on his face. No signal. What the hell? Just then, Holloway's black car emerges from the dark forest. Holloway is greeted with the magnificent sight of Hildington's dark white manor. Jesus. Wish I had that kind of money. Holloway drives across a long bridge and up to the house and parks next to a large stone fountain. Holloway gets out of his black car and takes in the sights. The manor was quite large, with a lot of red curtain windows. The door itself was almost just as impressive as the manor. 
Engraved on the expensive wooden doors were the letters B and H. The doors were very large and had gold doorknobs, probably real gold. The manor was a marble color and had stairs going up to the doors. There were also well-kept hedges around the place and lanterns for when it got dark. Holloway was quite impressed. Holloway walks up to the door, still looking around. When he reaches the door, he rings the doorbell. Even the doorbell sounded extravagant. Inside, Elmer's quickly, but gracefully, walks up to the door to answer it. Good evening, Mr. Holloway. Mr. Hildington has been expecting you. Are any of the others here yet? I'm afraid not. You're the first to arrive. Please, come in. Holloway walks in and Elmer's peeks outside real quick before closing the door again. Looks like you've arrived just in time, Mr. Holloway. Why is that? It would appear as though there's a storm coming. Eric Waltz is climbing out of a jetliner entitled Asia Airlines. He throws off his white Panama hat in excitement. The man right behind Waltz, Armstrong, quickly bends down and picks up the fallen hat. Waltz is currently sporting a white suit jacket with matching white pants. His hair is very short and accompanied by a near white beard, the same color as his hair. The man behind him wears a simple tuxedo. Waltz quickly runs off the plane with a large grin on his face. My oh my, it's been a while since I've traveled back to America. Just as beautiful as I remembered. Oh, do come here, Armstrong. Take a look at this. Yes, sir. Come in. Armstrong, carrying three suitcases, walks out of the airplane and takes in the landscape. The airport in which the plane landed is in a wide open plain with a forest in the near distance. Simply wonderful. Yes, sir. Waltz runs down the air stairs and Armstrong slowly walks down. My goodness, Armstrong. You sure are taking your time, aren't you? Sorry, you sure do pack a lot. Being prepared for anything is a great way to live. Come now, we mustn't be late for that dinner party. Ah, I do believe there's our ride right now. Just in time, too. A black first looking limo drives up and stops right by Waltz and Armstrong. The window is rolled down. Inside sits a plain dressed man with a worn Vermont Lake Monsters baseball cap on. Evening, sir. Evening. I suppose you're here to take us to the Hildington Manor? Yes, sir. It would be an honor to. Splendid. Well, hop on in. I'll get you there in one piece. Your servant there can put the suitcases in the trunk. Servant? Oh, no. This is my friend Armstrong. We've been on many adventures together. My sincerest apologies. It looked as though- Armstrong, would you kindly put those in the back? Of course. Walt gets into the limo as Armstrong stores the cases in the trunk. Armstrong closes the trunk and quickly hops into the limo. The driver puts his foot down on the accelerator and the limo zooms off towards the forest. So, what's the manor like exactly? The manor's a beauty, sir. I'd kill to live there. All nice and pristine-like, it's truly a sight to see. If it was the last thing I'd see, I'd die happy. Yes, it certainly sounds like it from the way you've described it. Don't you think, Armstrong? Yes, simply marvelous. We'll be arriving there shortly, sirs. Just sit back, relax, and let me worry about the driving. The forest begins to surround the car as it pushes forward. Waltz looks out his window and notices the darkening sky just above. My goodness, it appears as though a storm's brewing. Yes, sir. Heard of storms in the cards for today. Real nasty one, too, at that. Good thing the party's inside, eh, Armstrong? Yes, I'd hate to get my head wet. Ah, here it is coming up now. The jet black limo drives carefully across the bridge and up to the glamorous house. The sun is right behind the house and makes it appear almost heavenly. The sun, though, is soon covered by dark storm clouds. As they drive up, Holloway's car can be seen parked toward the side. Good God, the Hildington Manor is quite the sight. Not quite as grand as the Neuschwanstein or the Taj Mahal, but still quite grand. Quite grand indeed. Just like I said, sir. Looks as though we're not the first ones here. One of the other guests has arrived. Ah, yes. I do look forward to meeting all of these magnificent people. Here you are, sir. Thank you very much. You're quite the driver. Do we owe you anything? Much appreciated, sir. No, sir. You don't owe me a cent. Waltz pulls out a 50 and hands it to the driver. The driver looks surprised. Thank you very much. You didn't have to, though. I wanted to. Armstrong, would you mind getting the bags from the back? No problem. Hey, 
Do you need a hand? I do believe I have them. What things anyways? Armstrong and Waltz open their doors and step out. Waltz stretches for a moment while Armstrong retrieves the bags. Once Armstrong returns to Waltz with bags in hand, the driver waves a hand out of his rolled down window. Enjoy the party! The limo drives off, disappearing into the thick forest. Waltz waves after it. Quite a lovely gentleman. Come now, Armstrong. We have a dinner party to attend to. Inside, Elmers hears the limo depart and makes his way to the door. As Waltz and Armstrong walk up to the door, the door is open and Elmer walks out to greet them. Good evening, Mr. Waltz. How lovely it is that you were so gracious to join us this evening. Yes, wouldn't miss it for the world. I've been all around it, too, you know. Yes, yes. You must have some fascinating stories to share. Ha, huh. and you must be Mr. Armstrong. A pleasure, sir. Likewise. You two were the second guest to arrive. Mr. Holloway is in the sitting room, if you'd like to meet him. Fantastic. Elizabeth Harding is in her white, medium-sized car, driving through the forest. She quickly examines her makeup in the rearview mirror, making sure that it's perfect. She's satisfied at what she sees as she pushes a long strand of red hair away from her face. In her ears are beautiful blue earrings, which match her long blue dress perfectly. Around her neck is a string of pearls. Outside, the wind is howling and it's beginning to rain. She suddenly stops when she sees a small cloud of smoke and a blue car stopped. She parks, gets out of her car, and walks up to the blue one. Elizabeth notices a girl in a short white dress walk out from behind her car. She notes that her light blonde hair, which is in a bob cut style, and her piercing blue eyes. Oh thank god, I was hoping that I'd run into someone. What seems to be the problem? Rotten luck, it seems. My car just died. Not sure what happened, but then again, I'm a painter, not a mechanic. Oh well, I'll call up to get it towed, unless you've got a tow cable in that car of yours. Uva smiles at her joke. I'm afraid not. Thought so. Uva pulls out her phone, but doesn't get a signal. No signal? Weird. I could have sworn that I had one just minutes ago. Oh well, perhaps one of Hildington's workers could have a look at it. I could give you a ride to the manor if you'd like. I was just heading there myself. You've been invited too, have you? That's right. Wonderful. What a stroke of luck. Uva grabs her bags from the back of her car and places them in Elizabeth's. Uva and Elizabeth get into the car and they continue through the forest. Thanks for your help. I don't know what I'd do without it. Always willing to help a person in need. You said that you're a painter, correct? Yes, and a damned good one, I'd say. I'm quite famous, you know. I'm an artist myself. Oh, really? Dabble in painting now, do ya? Writing, actually. Oh, how lovely. You know, I've just remembered that I haven't told you my name. I'd lose my head if it weren't attached. I'm sure you would. I'm Uva Grigorovich. I do believe that I've seen some of your work in an art museum before. Yes. You do have some lovely works. Thank you, I appreciate that. Most people like them. I've been told I am very great at what I do. I'm sure. My name's Elizabeth Harding. Are you really? I would have never guessed. I do love your mystery novels. I've been a fan since The Midnight Murder. Thanks. That was one of my better ones. I've been lacking inspiration lately, but I might have found some. Is that so? Well, good on you. They cross the bridge, but as they cross, the bridge starts to collapse. Shit! Hang on! Elizabeth's car just barely makes it before the bridge falls down. Elizabeth stops her car. Jesus Christ! That was close. It's been one of those days. Let's just hope that it's not like this for the rest of our stay. Elizabeth continues her drive up to the manor. Once she reaches it, Elizabeth parks her car next to Holloway's. The two of them get out quickly, grab their bags, and run up the stairs. It begins to rain harder as Uva rings the doorbell. Inside, Elmers walks up to the door and opens it. Elizabeth and Uva quickly rush into the manor. Uva fixes her messed up hair and Elizabeth straightens the straps on her dress. Welcome, Mrs. Harding and Miss Gregovich. Quite bad weather we're having, isn't it, madams? I'd say so. Did something happen? I thought I heard a crash from outside. Your damned bridge gave out. Nearly killed the both of us. Terribly sorry. It is an old bridge. I'd have to get someone to fix that. Could you also get someone to look at my car? It's a ways back in the forest. It just died. Of course. 
I'll send someone to take a look. Sorry for the incident. I'm certain that nothing else like this will happen for the rest of your stay. Would you like me to take your bags up to your rooms? I'd appreciate it, please. You're free to join the rest of the guests in the sitting room. Elizabeth and Uvo walk to the sitting room while Elmers picks up the bags. The guests are all in the sitting room, getting acquainted. The sitting room is made of the same marble that the rest of the house is made of. There's a chandelier inside, but it's not as grand as the one in the main hall. There are two nice brown leather couches and a wooden coffee table. One couch is on the left and the other to the right. Both are facing inward with the coffee table in the middle. Each couch can fit three people. On the left sits Waltz and Holloway. On the right, Armstrong and now Uva. Uva is keeping a close eye on Holloway. Elizabeth walks into the room and sits on a chair, which is on the other side of the coffee table. It too is of the same color and material, probably custom made like the rest. Hello, I'm Holloway. Nathan Holloway. How do you do, Mr. Holloway? I'm Uva Grigorovich, famous painter. Surely you've heard of me? Uva smiles at Holloway, noticing his physical strength and his brown eyes. Can't say that I have. Not really an art person myself. <sighs> That's a pity. I'm Eric Waltz. Pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Gregorovich. Oh, it's Miss. My apologies, Miss Gregorovich. I just thought with such a pretty face that you'd have been taken already. And you are? That's Armstrong, a friend of mine. Makes the best cup of coffee you'll ever have. Oh, well, how do you do, Mr. Armstrong? Marvelous. And that leaves you. You must be Elizabeth Harding. I thought that I heard that you'd be joining us. <laughs> That's right. Pleasure. It sure is. I've read some of your work. You're pretty great. Thank you. What about me? Have you seen my work? Can't say that I have, but I'm sure it's good nonetheless. Uva sits back in her seat, looking disappointed. I see. So, what is it that you do exactly? He's a world traveler. Surely you've heard of Eric Waltz. Sounds familiar. Are you in pictures? Why, yes. I do create documentaries wherever I go. I'm also an author of books describing my journeys. I've read up on some of your travels. You've been to some amazing places. Yes, the world is full of amazing places. So what exactly do you do, Mr. Holloway? Please call me Nathan. I'm a detective for the police. Is it risky work? Sometimes, yeah. I do love risky business. Uva looks at Holloway, smiles, and winks. Holloway uncomfortably shifts in his spot. Holloway is about to say something to her, but is interrupted by Waltz. No offense, of course, but why exactly have you been invited? That's what I've been wondering. I mean, all of you guys are famous, and I'm just, uh, well, a simple detective. I haven't done anything that outstanding in my career. The invite just stated that my skills may be needed. Your skills? Does Hildington expect something to happen? I sure hope not. I could use a break. Odd. Quite odd. Well, I'm glad you're here. Really glad. Uh, yeah. Holloway fidgets with his wedding ring, but Uva doesn't notice. Instead, she takes in the sight of his face. Elmer suddenly walks into the room. Terribly sorry to interrupt, but dinner is almost ready. Splendid. I look forward to trying your cuisine. I don't know about everyone else, but I'm famished. Elmer's nods and he walks out. The guests all get up and file out of the room. They follow Elmer's to the dining room. The guests walk into the dining room. The dining room has yet another chandelier and looks very glamorous. The walls are the same white marble, but they have different paintings on them. One of which is a painting of Hildington himself. Below the chandelier is a large, dark brown wooden table. On the table are ten plates, one at each end and the rest are on the left and right. Chairs also surround the table in a similar fashion. The chairs are the same color and material as the table, and everything is well cleaned and polished. On the plates are each of the guests and staff's name, all except at the back end. On the left are Mr. Holloway, Miss Grigorovic, Mr. Waltz, and Mr. Armstrong. On the right are Mrs. Elizabeth, Miss DeHart, Miss Scriber, and Mr. Elmers. On the front end is Miss Chen. The back is reversed for Hildington himself. At each of the plates is a small vase with a rose in it. You may take your seats. The staff will be arriving shortly. Is it typical for the staff to eat with the guests? Oh yes, Mr. Hildington wants us all together. My oh my. Smell that, Holloway? 
That's the smell of beauty. It sure is. Yes, we are certainly in for a great meal tonight. Our chef here, Jacques, is quite good at what he does. Great, I'm starving. What about you, Armstrong? I sure am. Good man. Here comes the staff now. The door opens and in walks Rosie. Rosie has changed out of her work clothes and now dons an elegant but simple magenta dress. Right after her, Alexa and Juliet walk in. They too have changed out of their work clothes, and Alexa has washed her face and applied a bit of makeup. Alexa is wearing a nice blue dress and Juliet has on a green strapless one. Juliet also has on a little eyeshadow. They are holding hands and chatting a little, but are soon interrupted by Uva's stare. Alexa blushes and they both quietly take their seats. Everyone, this is Rosie Chen. She is the maid here, and a lovely maid she is at that. Rosie blushes a little at the comment. <laughs> Thanks, Harold. I do try my best. And who are you two? Uva points to Juliet and Alexa. They both glance at each other and then back at Uva. Juliet Scriber, ma'am. I'm Mr. Hildington's secretary. Ah, uh, and I'm Alexa Dehart. I'm the gardener. You know, now that I think about it, you never gave us your name. My apologies. I'm Harold Elmers, the butler. I'm guessing that you all know our names? Yes. Mr. Heldington told us before you arrived. Plus, they're right here on your plates. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, the lights go out and Uva screams. When the lights go back on after about 10 seconds, Hildington is standing at the front end of the table. Terribly sorry for that. The wires aren't what they used to be. Quite an entrance, sir. Yes, it was dramatic, wasn't it? Glad you all found the place all right? Glad to be alive, more like it. Your damned bridge gave out. Is that right? My apologies, Miss Grigorovich. It's quite an old bridge. In fact, I think it was there when my great-grandfather lived here. We've been needing to fix that for a while now, isn't that right, Juliet? I sent for someone about a week ago, but no one's arrived yet. Simply dreadful. Hopefully that'll be the worst of the events to happen these next few days. Speaking of that, uh, Mr. Heldington, why exactly am I here? What did you mean by, my skills may be needed? Ah, yes. Don't worry, Mr. Holloway. I will explain everything when the time is right. Right now, let's eat. You all must be starving. <laughs> sure am. Chef LaCroix, we're ready to dine. LaCroix walks out of the kitchen carrying a platter with plates with cavatappi and croissants. LaCroix sets the platter in the center of the table and backs away. For your first course, cavatappi with primavera sauce and croissant. Bon appétit. LaCroix walks back to the kitchen and closes the door. Everyone is sitting around the table, enjoying LaCroix's well-cooked meal. Uva keeps on glancing at Holloway and Hildington is smiling as he looks around at all of the guests. Rosie and Elmers appear to be mouthing a conversation, so no one else hears. Elizabeth appears to be in a deep thought, possibly thinking about her novel, while Waltz is grinning as he eats what's on his plate. Armstrong also appears to be enjoying the cavatapai. He reaches over and grabs a croissant. Your chef is top-notch, Hildington. I haven't eaten this good since my trip to India. Yes, he's quite the culinary artist. Mr. Waltz, would you believe me if I told you that he's self-taught? Really? That is quite impressive. Like I said, quite the culinary artist. Mr. Holloway, would you mind passing me a croissant? Holloway grabs a croissant and gives it to Uva. Uva quickly catches hold of Holloway's hand for a moment. You're quite strong, Nathan. Uva smiles at Holloway and looks into his eyes, but Holloway tries to avoid her gaze. Instead, he looks at Uva's hand. Juliet, Alexa, and Walt watch to see what'll happen next. Uh, thanks. I work out. I'm sure you do. You're quite handsome too, but I bet you get that a lot. Yes, my wife does say that from time to time. Your wife? That's right. Oh, I didn't realize that you were married. <laughs> <laughs> oh, quite embarrassing, isn't it, Armstrong? Armstrong looks at Uva for a second and does a half smile, as if trying to say sorry for Walt's behavior. Uva doesn't look up, though. She keeps her eyes lowered. Everyone tries to avoid looking at Uva as she continues to blush from embarrassment. There's a brief period in which no one talks, but it's broken. You know, I've read some of your books, and I do like them. I'm looking forward to reading the next one. Thank you. Speaking of which, would you mind telling us about your next novel? Sure. 
I don't see the harm in it. Maybe I'll have a couple more fans. So far, the novel's about a dinner party going south as each guest is killed off. I've just started it back in September, though. It's got a long way to go. Very interesting. It sounds like a page-turner. <laughs> Let's just hope the same doesn't happen here. <laughs> <laughs> Juliet walks into the kitchen. LaCroix is seen standing by a granite counter. On the counter is a scrumptious-looking chocolate cake. LaCroix turns around to face Juliet. Is the cake ready, Jock? Yes. I'll bring it out right away. LaCroix looks around his kitchen for a second. Wait. Hmm. I'm missing a knife. A knife? Where'd you last have it? It was right here in my holder. Well... I'm sure it'll turn up. It's gotta be around here somewhere. I suppose so. Juliet exits the kitchen and LaCroix grabs the cake. He carries it out to the dining room, and the knife holder can be seen with a knife missing. 